The fourth final assumption behind the assertion that science leads to atheism, which is based on philosophical naturalism and methodological naturalism. Let's discuss this assumption. So, people who believe that science leads to atheism, they really hold a non-scientific assumption. What is that non-scientific assumption? It's the philosophical worldview of philosophical naturalism. It's not scientific. What's philosophical naturalism? Philosophical naturalism is based on three things. Number one, the belief that there is no divine, the assertion that there's no divine. Number two, the assertion that all physical phenomena can be explained, all phenomena can be explained by physical processes. And number three, there is no afterlife, which is similar to the idea of that there's no divine. So what's philosophical naturalism? There's no divine, no hereafter, and all phenomena in the universe can be explained by physical processes. Now what's the problem with that? If these are the lenses that you put on your eyes to see the world, then what are you going to see? You're just going to see the denial of the divine. Because these are your lenses, right? Say you go to a, a optometrist and you buy some glasses, Kelvin Klein, the atheist edition, you put it on your face, what are you going to see? You ain't going to see God nowhere. You don't see no divine power, right? That's it. And that's why you have the likes of Many scientists that you know, we all respect for their scientific endeavors, but frankly, you know, they had the wrong lenses on. And they, were, they had non-scientific assumptions on their faces as lenses, which was Kelvin Klein Atheist Edition. Right? And so if you adopt that false philosophical assumption that basically is literally based on blind faith in my view, then all you're going to see is the denial of the divine because you started with that premise. You've put those lenses on. And even the atheist himself, Professor Michael Ruse, a very honest atheist philosopher, he says, if you want a concession, I've always said that naturalism, philosophical naturalism, is an act of faith. Faith. And that's why when you discuss with people, don't discuss the science. Discuss the assumptions that people are holding. And you have a more fruitful discussion. The next part of this assumption is methodological naturalism. Now, this is not a problem for theists, especially the Islamic tradition. Now, what's methodological naturalism? It's basically the assertion that for any scientific conclusion or theory to be scientific, it cannot refer to the divine power or creativity. That's all it's saying. It doesn't say God doesn't exist. It's ju it just says, for your science to be science, for your conclusion to be scientific, for your theory to be scientific, just don't refer to God's power or, or divine wisdom or creativity. Now, this is not a problem for the Muslim because the Muslim believes that the whole universe is made up of physical causes. And these are asbab in Arabic. These are causes that God has used to manifest his divine will. That's not a problem for the Muslim. But what some people do is they conflate methodological naturalism and they think it means philosophical naturalism. No, because you could be a methodological naturalist. Like when you do science, you don't refer to God's divine power creativity, but you could still be a theist that believes in God, of course you can, there's no contradiction, because your philosophy could be, well those physical causes are a manifestation of the divine will. No problem. So they conflate methodological naturalism with, with philosophical naturalism. And that's why evolutionary biologist Scott C. Todd, he said, of course the scientist as an individual is free to embrace a reality that transcends naturalism methodological naturalism in this case.